Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13 says, There had no temptation, trial, or test taken you but such as is common to man. But God. Somebody say, but God. But God is what? He is faithful who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted, tried or tested above that which you are able, but will with the temptation, trial or test also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Tonight, I want to begin a new series of lessons entitled Life Options for Broken Situations. Life Options for Broken Situations. Anybody ever feel frustrated? Amen. Amen. You know, uh, feel, felt in, in despair, you know, like, God, when is this thing going to happen? You know, and the devil has been fighting you and fighting you and fighting you, putting up some resistance against you. Well, listen, there are some life options for life's broken situations. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And I see here in the Bible that God says, first of all, that the tests that we go through, they're common to man. Somebody say common. You're not the only one, praise the Lord. That, that should be encouragement to you, that you're not the only one that might be going through something, amen? There are other people who are going through challenge after challenge after challenge after challenge, but guess what? God is faithful. Amen. amen. Your situation, your broken situation, is not just about you, amen? It's about the devil trying to keep you from giving God the glory. Amen. But it's common, amen? Then it says that God is faithful. Amen. Whenever you are facing your most difficult challenge, you need to declare to yourself, God is faithful. Amen. He is not only faithful to others, but he is faithful to me. Amen. 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 And then the Bible says that he won't allow you to be tested, tried or tested above your ability. Praise the Lord. Amen. So God already knows that whatever you're going through, you can handle it. Amen. That's, see, that's what we need to understand. That I can handle whatever I'm going through because God says I can. Amen. And then the Bible says that he's going to give me a way out. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now, go to uh, Psalms 50. Psalms 50. Psalms 50. Amen. God is committed to us to deliver us out of trouble. Amen. Out of our broken situations. Amen. He's committed to us that he will deliver us out of our broken situations. Psalms 50. Look at verse number 14. Psalms 50, verse number 14. Watch this now. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High and call upon me in the day of trouble. And what did God say? I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Now the question has to be asked, are you calling on him in your time of trouble? Well, he has promised that he will deliver you. Amen. But look what he says. And then you shall give him all the glory. Amen. See, when your deliverance come, you cannot say this was all about me. I did this. God said, no, no, no. I will deliver you, but you got to understand that you got to give me the glory. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Psalms 107. Psalms 107. Psalms 107. Look at verse number 17. 19, Psalms 107, verse number 19. Watch this now. God is committed to deliver us, amen? Look what he says here. Psalms 107, look at verse number 19. Then they cry unto the Lord, where? In their trouble. In their trouble. So God is letting us know, Aileen, that we're going to face some trouble. But he said, when you call on me while you're in the trouble... The Bible says he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So he says, look, while you're in your trouble, you ought to be praising him. See, we want to wait till we get out. Amen. Before we lift up our hands and give God the praise. Amen. God said, look, while you're in that thing. That's the time that you start to praise me because you know you already got the victory. Amen. Right. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, now, 
Trouble might have taken you by surprise, but it didn't take God by surprise. God's not surprised by your trouble. Amen? Amen. That's why he is always giving us a plan of action, a way out of it. Amen? Because it didn't take him by surprise. I like that, man. I like that. Because we could face some dis distasteful, devastating, and discomforting situations, but there are no surprise for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, here's a good thing about it. Whenever I face a death situation in my life, God always gives me a life option. Amen? Whenever I face trouble, God always gives me a way out of it. It's just a matter of whether I choose it. Amen? Amen. There's always a life option for all of our dilemmas in life. Ooh, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, it's whether I see it or not. Go to 2 Kings chapter number 6. Amen. Because I see that many times people are looking at the wrong thing when it comes down to their broken situations. Many times we focus on our situations versus the answer. Amen. And it's all in how I see it. Somebody say how I see it. Because these two people seen the same thing, says Pauline. But one of them seen the life option and the other one just seen the trouble. Yeah. Amen. Second Kings chapter number six. Second Kings chapter number six. Look at verse number eight. Second Kings chapter six. Verse number eight. Watch this now. Watch this. <laughs> then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for neither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchambers. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Now, now look what's, what's happening now. God reveals to Elisha what the king of Syria is about to do to the children of Israel before it ever happened. He goes and tells the king of Israel, hey, man, look, you're going to be attacked in this area. Amen. And so the king of Israel said, OK, we're not going to go that way. Amen. So then the king of Syria gets upset and says, we must have a spy in the camp. Somebody must be telling them all our business. And, and they say, no, king, it's that prophet, that man of God that's over in that, in that city that, that's telling all your business to the king of Israel. He said, well, let's go get him. OK, so watch this now. Verse number 14. Therefore, said he died the horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host uh, compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, this man say, look, I see all these horses. I see all these chariots. Let's, 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 let's count this thing. One, two. Let's count it the other way. One, two. All these horses and chariots, and you mean there's more with us than there are with them? He was looking at the wrong thing. See, all he could see was what he could see in the natural. And many times when people have broken situations in their lives, they focus more on the situation than on the God who can deliver them out of the situation. Amen. So the prophet had to say, Lord, open his eyes that he might see. Not with these physical eyes, but see the spiritual dynamics that's going on. There's a host of angels around that army. Amen. And many times we don't see that. We're looking at our natural conditions, our natural problems. And God said, look, open your eyes. You got to see your broken situation a little differently than you, than you are right now. Verse 17, and Elisha said, open his eyes, and I pray thee, open his eyes that he might see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire round about the Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto, unto the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. <laughs> and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. 
So now Elisha's servant couldn't see, okay, what was really behind the, the natural situation. So Elisha prays, God blind my enemies so they can't see. And Elisha, verse 19, said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, he says, and I will bring you to the man whom you see. But he led them to Samaria. <laughs> Elisha said, look, I'm not the one you're looking for, but I'll tell you what, I'll lead you to the one that, that, you, that you're looking for. Amen? Wow. You see what God will do? When you begin to see things a little bit different? Amen, amen, amen. You got to look at your situation right now a little differently. Amen? You can't look at at what the devil's trying to do to you, you got to look at the victory that God has already given you. Amen? Yes. Amen, amen, amen. See, we got to be fully persuaded, man, that what God promises, he's able to perform it. Amen? I mean, that's where we are. We got to be fully persuaded. You know, you know, man, the devil tries to uh, uh, attack, right? And uh, he tries to bring discouragement and he tries to bring uh, frustration and I have to look at the devil and say, hold up a second. God has already given me the victory. I see something greater than what you see, amen? You want to bring me my challenge, my problem, my situation. But God said, I've already delivered you from that. Praise the Lord, amen, amen, amen. Because I'm fully persuaded that what God has promised, that he's able to perform. Now, now here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing, though, Clint. Are we willing to wait for God to bring the deliverance that we need? Amen, amen, amen. See, see, what happens is the devil bring you uh, facts, statistics, and data and try to make you believe that that statistic is the truth. Amen. No, statistics, facts, and data, they're just that. Statistics, facts, and data. They are not the truth. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 17, my word is truth. Amen. We got to depend on God's word. Amen. If we're going to Look, have these life options for our broken situations. God's word has to be the final authority for our lives. God, what did you say about my situation? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Go to Deuteronomy chapter number 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Life options for broken situations. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter number 30. How, how do you see your problem? Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 19. Deuteronomy chapter number 30, verse 19, look what it says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you what? Life and what? And death. What? Blessing and cursing. Therefore what? Choose life, Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So watch this now. There might be a dead, a dead situation that you're facing, but you have to look at the life option. He said, look, there's death and life, and look, choose life. There's blessing and cursing. Choose the blessing. Amen. But it's a choice that we have to make. Amen, amen, amen. Who said, somebody says it's a choice. Amen. Now, now, choosing life means I will always obey divine directives. Amen. Choosing life means I will always uh, obey divine directives. We was in a, a service on, 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 on Sunday. And, uh, and so I'm sitting there uh, uh, at the offering time, and I hear the Spirit of God speak to me and say, sow a seed. Now, I had not intended on, on sowing a seed like that. Right. Amen. I had a seed in mind that I wanted to sow, and uh, I hear God say, you need to sow. Amen. And so, so now, not only that, but God says, listen, what you're trying to receive, you need to sow out of it. Amen? Because you need seed in the ground in order to get the return. So it is at the moment that I obey God, amen, that it becomes a life choice for me. Amen? And so many of you, when you hear God speak, you're trying to debate with God on whether you should obey or not. Woo, Jesus. Amen. And what happens is when you don't choose God's way, you're choosing the death way. Hallelujah. Amen. See, obedience... I have found that this life is easy. All I got to do is obey God. I mean, that's it. All I got to do is do what God told me to do, and that's, look, I, my life is, is easy. Now, will I have challenges? And, and Yes, I will. Will I face situations that I don't like? Yes, I will. But guess what? Life is easy when I just obey God. That's all I got to do, just obey God. Even, even when it hurts in the natural, just obey God. Oh, 
of Jesus. Amen. And that's what many people are. They're not obeying God. They're looking at the situation and not choosing the life option. Amen. And so when you don't obey God, guess what? You have the, you, you don't have the death option. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Go to 1 John chapter 5. Choosing life also means that we will overcome difficulties and devastation. Amen. Choosing life means that we will overcome difficulties and devastation. Amen. First John chapter five. Hallelujah. First John chapter number five. Look at verse number four. First John chapter five, verse number four. For whatsoever is born of God does what? Overcome the world, and this is the what? Victory, Victory that overcometh the world, what? Yeah. Even our faith. And who is he that overcometh the world, but he that, that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. So listen, when I choose life, I'm choosing the victory. Amen. I'm choosing to overcome every difficulty and devastation that may come upon in my path. It's a choice I make. Amen. It's a choice you make to be victorious over your situation. Praise the Lord. See, you can't concede victory to the devil. Oh, Jesus. Amen. You can't give the devil your victory. The devil, look, he always loses. If we choose to obey God, if we choose to have this life option to be victorious in every situation, no matter whether it's devastating, no matter what the condition may be, listen, you choose that you're going to be victorious. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know why you're victorious? Because there's somebody living in you. The Bible says greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So look, I got the victory not because of me, but I got the greater one living on the inside of me. Amen. You got the greater one living on the inside of you. So listen, choose life. Somebody say choose life. Ooh, praise the Lord. Amen. Now, earlier I was talking about these statistics. Amen. Don't, don't, don't be overwhelmed by data and statistics and stuff like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Know that those statistics and data will change. Yeah, yeah, know, know that the data will change. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Yeah, the, the data will change, amen? <laughs> yeah, it's going to change. Look what it says. Verse, uh, let's start at verse number 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 16. You ready? For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed, what? Day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are what? Temporal. But the things which are not seen, they are what? So look what happens here. Look what the Bible says. Look. Our inward man is being renewed day by day. Amen. But he, he, he classifies what we go through as a light affliction. Oh, Jesus. Amen. See, you know why it's a light affliction? Because we have been willing to cast our care on him. Amen. See, when you're trying to carry it yourself, it's not a light affliction. Because you took it upon yourself and not let God carry it for you. Amen. When, when somebody else carrying the load for you, yeah, it's going to be a light affliction. But look what it says. It is for just a moment. What you're going through is just for a moment. Now you say, well, Pastor, my moment, man, this lasts a long time. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I wish my moment just last just, just like that and it'd be over with. Not, 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 not for a week, not for a month, but, but, but not for a year. But look, God, let it be like that. You know, the Bible says that a day with God is like a thousand years and a thousand years but for a day. Oh, Jesus. See, our, our, we get messed up with time. time. God ain't worried about no time. God wants to know, do you trust me? Amen. So he says, it's a light affliction, but that light affliction is working for you. <laughs> okay, okay. Those people, who, I, I, know, I know at one time, uh, I don't, Chubb, you still lifting weights? You still, I mean, you still working out? Well, lifting weights is there designed to tone your muscles, to build your muscles, amen? You can't build it 
if there's no resistance. You got to have something that goes against the muscles in order to, 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 to build it up. And so, so he says, watch this now, what your afflictions are doing is building you up. Now, now, the more weight that you have, I mean, the, the, the harder it's going to be. But guess what? When you're through with it, you're going to be stronger. <laughs> see, see, okay. If a person just lifts five-pound weights versus a person that lifts 100-pound weights, who do you think is going to be the strongest? The one with the 100 pounds. I mean, that consistently lift 100 pounds. Amen. And so many believers still have the five-pound five, five pound weight. And any time, any weight above the five pounds, they try to give up. Because it's just too hard for them. But they don't understand that it's working for them. This light affliction that you're going through right now, it's really working for you. You don't understand it right now, but it is working for you. Amen. And then he said, look, verse 18 said, look, while we look not at the things which are seen, you got to get beyond what you see right now. Because this stuff is only temporary, amen? Amen? It's only temporary. He said, look, focus on the things which are eternal. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, Jesus, amen, amen. So I got to choose life options, amen. I don't look at the, at, at the data. Don't look at the statistics, amen. Listen, the Bible says uh, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, amen? God's word is, gonna, is the truth. And God's word has the ability to change your situation. If you believe it, hallelujah, amen. Who Jesus, amen, 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 all right? What, what many of us don't understand is that many times broken situations are a disguise for a promotion. What you say, Pastor Shaw? Uh-huh. Yeah, that it's a dis disguise for a promotion. Okay, well, what you mean by that? Well, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a broken situation, it was a disguise. A promotion was on the way. If they could just get through that thing. If they could get through that fiery furnace. Amen. They were going to get the promotion that God promised. Amen. Daniel in the lion den. Amen. That was this disguise for a promotion. See? And, and you don't see that right now the situation that you're going through. Look, the devil's trying to make you think that you're not going to make it. But really, God is trying to promote you. <laughs> if you take the life option. Amen. See, if you learn how to pass the test. Amen. You get the promotion. Now, 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 to make this thing so simple, school is almost out. And your children had to take a test in order to get the promotion to the next grade. If they don't pass the test, they either have to retest or they got to take the class all over again. And many times what happens with believers is they're not passing the test because they are looking at the wrong information. Amen. They're looking at the situation and saying, oh, Lord, I'm not going to make it. But instead of looking at the open book test, it's open book. God said, open your Bible and see the answer. The answer is, I deliver you out of all your mess. All right. Amen. The answer is, look, look, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The answer is, look, I will always be on your side. All right. All right. Yeah. Amen. But what happens is, because we're looking at the wrong thing, we don't see this as a promotion. Woo, Jesus, amen. Amen. We only see it as devastation, stress, worry, amen. And yes, this portal, why me? Why do I have to go through this? Because God surveyed your life and said that you can handle it. You, you would never know if your faith is strong until you go through a test. I don't care what you say. Amen. Yeah. Can you pass this test? That's the question. Can you pass this test? Amen. If you can't pass this test, you can't get the promotion. Amen. That, and that's what believers are right now. Amen. You're going through your test, and God is really asking the question, really, can you pass this test? Amen. Can you pass the test? If you pass the test, I'll promote you. Oh, Jesus. Amen. I'm looking for the promotion. Amen. Oh, y'all don't understand, man. I'm looking for the promotion. And I want you to be promoted. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. Now, now, when it comes down to making a decision for life choices, watch this now. Four things show up at, at the table of, of decision making. Four things show up. First of all, your mind shows up. Amen. Your reasoning, your logic, your academia, it shows up at the table. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us to renew our mind, because if, if our mind shows up that haven't been renewed, we're going to fall back into our old ways of doing things. The second thing that shows up is your emotions. Amen. And sometimes your emotions are impulsive and unreliable. And that's why the Bible says to set our affections on things above. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can't make a decision, a life choice option decision when you have your emotions involved. Because many times you'll make the wrong decision based upon how you feel. And that's what the devil likes. He don't want you to make a decision based upon revelation knowledge. He wants you to make a decision based upon your emotions. And that's why he tries to move your emotions this way and that way. Amen. Amen. See, if you can recall, you, you wouldn't make some of the decisions you made in your past if it wasn't your, with your emotions involved. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. The third thing that shows up at the table of decision-making is your flesh. But your flesh has been contaminated by the world system. Amen. And you can't allow your flesh to make the life choice option for you because the devil has already contaminated. The Bible says that there is no good thing that dwelleth in the flesh. Amen. So, so, and then the Bible says that, look, if you live by the flesh, you can't please God. Praise the Lord. So your mind is not the right way to make a life choice option. Your, your uh, emotions is not a way to make a life change option. Neither is your flesh. Amen. Uh, have the right to make a life change, change option. There is somebody that lives inside of us called the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says he's our advocate, our guide. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he will bring into remembrance everything that we know right. from the things of God. Amen. That's how we make life change choices. Amen. Life options. When we have Holy Spirit speaking to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And look, he wants, to, he, wants to, he wants to live in us and he wants to speak to us. Amen. And whichever one of those four factors we yield ourselves to the most. It's what's going to determine whether we choose the life change option or not. Because if you allow your mind to make the decision for you, look, your mind's going to reason your, everything out. Well, you know, how are we going to do that? How are we going to obey God like that? And then this, your mind starts reasoning. Amen. Your flesh will act up. Amen. Your emotions will get involved. Woo -hoo, praise the Lord. Amen. The good news is, watch this now, that broken situations don't last always. Oh, Jesus. Amen. When I allow Holy Spirit to help me make the choice for the life options, my broken situation won't last always. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, we have to learn how to endure the persecution, endure the hardship. Isn't that, sometimes that seems difficult, that we're going to endure hardship? Well, the question will be, how long do I have to endure this? How long do I have to go through it? Well, I told you earlier, when you pass the test. Amen. For every new level, there is a new devil. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all don't think that once you get that promotion that the devil going to leave you alone, huh? He's just going to come at you a different way. So you got to learn how to endure hardship. Yeah, we all, we all got to face it. Amen. Praise the Lord. We all got to go through it. But guess what? I'm just going to endure it. Amen. Then the Bible said, then, then I, gotta, I, gotta, I have to resist the temptation to quit. Amen. Resist the temptation to quit. Many believers are, 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 are right at the brink of quitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're right at the brink of quitting. Because it seemed like nothing's ever going to change. But you got to resist the temptation to quit. Because here's why. Even though you're in a fight, amen, with your adversary, he just as tired as you. <laughs> Amen. And if you don't quit, you win. Amen. If you don't quit, quit, you win. Okay. So, so, so if I'm going to, if, if I'm going to make the life choice, choice options, I got to endure hardship. I got to resist the temptation to quit. 
I have to buck the odds. What you say? Yeah, you got to buck the odds. Amen? If, if nobody else make it out of what you're going through, guess what? You got to declare, I will. I don't care if everybody failed at what, you, what you're going through right now. They never made it out of it. Buck the odds and say, no, 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 I'm going to get out. No, 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 I, 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 I win this thing. I pass this test. I don't care if my, my mama, my grandmama, all my generations before me didn't come out of this situation. Look, I'm going to buck the odds. Amen? Yeah, 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 the audacity. That's right, that's right. Uh-huh, I'm going to buck the odds. See, that's what you got to understand, man. God is looking for just, some, one, just one person that was, is willing to buck the odds and trust him. Ooh, Jesus. Then overcome every situation. Amen. Now watch this. Now, 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 many times what people don't understand is their broken situation is, is, can, could be caused by their human error. You might have done something wrong that, that got you in that broken situation. Amen. And thank God he loves you enough to forgive you for what you, whatever you've done. Praise the Lord. And restore you. Amen. Yes, amen. Then you have to understand that you have an adversary that's trying to attack you. The Bible says he's trying to kill, steal, and to destroy, from, to destroy you. Amen. We have an adversary who's attacking us. Amen. Don't, don't discount that. The Bible says that he goes to and fro, searching the earth. And he's going he to pimp you out to God. Amen. And then God might be turning the devil on to you. You say, what? Yeah, yeah, God could be turning the devil on to you because he knows that you can handle the situation. Yeah. Have you considered my servant Job? Yeah. He just took Job's name out and put your name in. Yeah. You say, God, why you turned him on me? Because you can handle it. Because you're able to make the life choice option that you're going to live and not die. Yeah. Woo, Jesus, amen. Amen. You mean to tell me? See, see. Man, that, that, just, that just confounds the mind that God himself would say, hey, have you considered? And he called your name out? Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good, Sister Porter. Sister so Porter say, use me, Lord. Not, not why me, but use me. Amen. Now, you got to look at the end of the story with, with Job. Job got double for his trouble. Amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, amen. So, so why you crying, why me? Job was like, okay, well, I'm going through it, I'm overcoming. Now, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, look, I'm going to get the promotion at the end of this thing. So people go through challenging situations and broken situations because of human error. Thirdly, thirdly, people go through broken situations because of the challenge of the times. Amen? Elijah didn't do anything wrong. The brook just dried up. Amen? There, there are some sources in our lives that could dry up. Praise the Lord. But you haven't done anything wrong. It's just a sign of the time. Amen, amen, amen. And then the call of God can cause broken situations. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, Paul and Silas got locked up in jail because they were honoring the call of God on their lives. They didn't do anything wrong. They cast that devil out that girl, and, and, and her boss got mad. Yeah. Call the popo on them and say, come get these folks, man. They, 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 they mess with my money stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Got her delivered, set free, and got them put in jail. That was the call of God on their lives that, 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 that had that broken situation. But look at what God did. And at midnight, yeah. when Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises unto God, yeah. that something supernatural happened. That was an immediately that took place. Glory. Amen. And they got free and delivered. Oh, praise the Lord. See, we, we, we've got to look at this thing a little bit different. Yes. Amen? And the final way, the reason why men go through broken situations, watch this now, is because of the unbridled will of man. Yeah. You got some evil people in this world, man. Evil people that are just doing evil things. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, 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 I declare tonight that each of you will begin to make the life choice option to live. I declare and decree tonight that each of you will make the life cho choice option to have the blessing instead of the curse. Amen? Tonight, you got to make up in your mind, I don't care what I'm going through, this is only temporary. 
Amen. It's only temporary. Okay. You know, every now and then, especially we're about to get into the hurricane season in our area. And every now and then, the television station comes on and they, they have a, a, a broadcast test. You know, they have that big old buzz that go across the screen. And, but and it, it, it says this, Clint, this is only a test. But that test doesn't last a long time. It lasts for a few seconds. Amen. And then after the, the test is over, it goes back to the regular programming. Now, why you say that, Pastor? Because right now, you might be going through your little test. But sooner or later, you're going to return back to the regular, uh, the regular programming. And the regular programming is that you win. Right. Man, when you start to see the script of, of the Word of God, and you start to see that, look, man, I win in every situation, I'm going back to the regular broadcasting channel, and I'm going, I'm going to win tonight. I'm going to win the, tomorrow. I'm going to win the next day. I'm going to win until I get to 120. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You cannot, you cannot look at your situation as devastation. Okay? Don't get depressed about what you're going through. It is only a test. Take the life option. Amen. God says he always gives us a way out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Will you take that life choice option? Amen. To live and not die? Will you take the life choice option to have the blessing versus the curse? Yeah. Will you choose life tonight yeah. that you and your seed yeah. may live? Amen. Amen. 